Okay, in <coughs> this lecture, uh, we study how to maximize the signal to noise ratio at the sampling instance of time. So, in the last lecture, we studied that the minimum sampling rate is one sample per symbol and that would be one by t. Uh, that should not be less than one by t. Uh, so, but how to maximize the signal to noise ratio at the sampling instance of time so that there are less chances of error in the uh, in our decision. So for this, uh, we use the matched filter. So in today's lecture, we see that how can we uh, define the response of the match filter and the mathematical expression for it. So uh, we assume that the output of the filter is a i of t and uh, how can we estimate the output of the filter? So for this, we know that if the signal is uh, S of T, if this is our signal and the Fourier transform is S of F, so we have S of F is the input signal. So that is the input of the filter and that is h of f which is unknown and we assume that uh, its value uh, is h of f so it's the general expression for h of f and this h of f is unknown so in frequency domain we multiply these two signals and we take the inverse Fourier transform to take the sample amplitude at the uh, t instant of time. So that uh, is the amplitude of the sample. And that can be achieved if we take the inverse Fourier transform of this, then we have this expression in time domain. So, so what we are doing at the receiver side that the signal received is passed from a filter which maximize the signal to noise ratio of the received signal. So this is how we calculate the amplitude of the signal at the output of the filter but we also have noise added into the signal so for this we have the expression of the noise power so the noise power is n naught by 2 so we will take into account the power spectral density uh, of the filter. And uh, what will be the, uh, what will be the noise is limited to the bandwidth of the filter and uh, that power is uh, taken by squaring and integrating it from minus infinity to infinity. But in fact, this is integrated from the bandwidth. Uh, say it's uh, one by minus one by two t to one by two t. So, but uh, when we integrate the PSD of the filter uh, from this band of interest 
and multiply it by the noise power spectral density. So we will get the noise uh, variance. We will get the noise variance. So in fact, this is the numerator and this is the denominator in signal to noise ratio at t instant of time. Uh, it's the t instant of time because we assume here that uh, this amplitude is at time t. That amplitude is at time t. So we divide the signal power. We divide the signal power with the noise power. To take the power, we have to scale the uh, received signal amplitude. So we will have to take the square of this amplitude value in time domain. Right? So next step, we will simplify this relationship and we will try to estimate this unknown value of h of f. So this unknown value of h of f is uh, uh, find by simplifying this relationship. Uh, so in this relationship, uh, we use Schwartz inequality to simplify the numerator expression, expression in the numerator, right? So we want to simplify this expression. Uh, so this expression has two parts. Uh, one is H of F and the other is S of F. So this part is the representing the delay in time in uh, time domain. Uh, but it, it doesn't uh, affects the magnitude of the signal. So we say that this is F1 of X and this is F2 of X. So we assume that if F1 of X is K times the conjugate of F2 of X, then we can generalize this relationship as uh, Schwartz inequality. So this is the Schwartz inequality that we can uh, we can write this as uh, 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 this expression. We can write this expression as uh, uh, simply H of F magnitude square and S of F magnitude scale. Uh, so, so this is, um, uh, this is in fact is uh, what we are assuming that uh, uh, the power, this is in fact is, uh, this relationship uh, gives the power, uh, total power of the filter and because this component is in fact uh, you can say is the PST and integrating the PST you get the total power and here is the same with the signal. So when you split uh, this numerator expression into uh, two components So what will happen, let me go back. So there is something wrong. So uh, when we simplify this relationship, So we will get a uh, signal to noise ratio at sampling instance of time is two by n naught S of F uh, square. 
so uh, this is in fact is the energy of the signal so wait for a while so i want to show you this uh, the simplification of the numerator by h of f magnitude square and s of f magnitude square and uh, this will cancel uh, this component with this component and uh, this will cancel this component with this component and uh, finally we left here uh, in the numerator the only expression left is s of f square so this is in fact is the signal energy of uh, s of t so we represent it by e so this expression will be reduced to two e by n naught so what will be uh, the case the maximum signal to noise ratio at t uh, at t sampling instant uh, should not uh, should be uh, greater than equal to to e b i n naught and that can be achieved now look at this uh, schwartz inequality expression uh, what will be this h of f uh, this h of f will depend on this function f of f1 of x and f2 of x so if f1 of x is k times conjugate of this f2 of x so this expression will be reduced to uh, conjugate of this function so this uh, function s of f ej2 pi ft conjugate into k times will represent the response of the filter which is required at the receiver to achieve this maximum signal to noise ratio at t sampling instant of time so this uh, the conjugate of this is k s uh, conjugate of f into e minus j2 by ft so we will write uh, uh, its uh, impulse response by taking the inverse fourier transform of this relationship so in fact uh, this inverse uh, will be s of minus t and that would be delayed by t time so we have the delay of this by t time so we can express this as the impulse response of the filter required at the receiver to have the maximum signal to noise ratio so if we see this is the response of the match filter so you already have a lecture about the response of the match filter and uh, you know that this response of the match filter uh, is zero to t uh, duration of the uh, symbol and <clears throat> zero elsewhere so you have uh, already know about this is uh, so what uh, 
uh, this actually is that we are in fact convolving the signal with the with its own version we are convolving the signal with its own version uh, which is delayed in time so it is the impulse response of the filter so later on we will discuss that how uh, it uh, is similar to the correlator that uh, it is surprising that we take the convolution of the signal uh, with itself uh, with delayed version and we uh, the correlated response uh, we correlate the signal that two things are similar but have different waveforms so i'll show you later on so this is in fact is the required signal and that is uh, inversed in time and this is the desired impulse response of the filter if it is de de delayed by t symbol duration so it is it looks like this so first we have the mirrored image uh, uh, we have the mirrored image which is inverse in time and we delayed it by t duration so this is in fact uh, is uh the response of the filter impulse response of the filter and we want the received signal to convolve with this so we assume that this system is causal and it has no value uh, priority uh, so this is a causal system so uh, in fact the received signal is convolved with the impulse response of the filter we have studied so we have uh, seen that this expression convolution expression can be written as r of ta the received signal with delay tau and the impulse response of the filter with tau delay so when we put h of t as s of uh, we will put uh, h of t uh, as s of t minus t so that value so h of t is s of t minus t so that t is in fact is uh, t minus tau in our case so we will use this expression here that uh, this t is replaced with t minus tau because the expression of the uh, impulse response of the filter is t minus t and that t is delayed with tau so if we say that uh, what value of this t uh, what value of this t will be that value because we are uh, we want to maximize the signal to noise ratio or we are interested in the value of the signal to noise ratio at uh, t instant of time so we will choose this value of t uh, we choose this value of t is equal to capital t and if we choose this value as capital t so this will this t will cancel this t and we have this r of t s of t is equal to t of tau 
So what actually it means? That this, uh, the correlator, uh, the match filter output is similar to the output of the correlator. But at t instants of time, at t instants of time. So what will be the difference between the correlator and the match filter? The difference in the output waveform. So what difference in the output waveform is that uh, this uh, this waveform, the correlator is in fact uh, is you are determining the correlation. So if you are minimizing the delay, so you are maximizing the correlation. So when it moves further, so it start decreasing and it makes a triangle. So the correlator response is like this. So uh, it has some maximum value and uh, it is uh, it has some maximum value uh, and at uh, sorry at this time at this time t time and it has uh, uh, it has some value here so this is uh, this is this part is not exists the maximum point is maximum correlation point is at this t value uh, at t symbol duration but the match filter output is in fact is uh, a waveform like this I have a waveform like this this is the convolution so this is the convolution so uh, but the value at these points at these points uh, where it is equal to the correlator so but we are not interested in uh, other values of time so we are only interested in the values uh, at the sampling instance so the minimum sampling rate we want to achieve is one by t and we want to maximize the signal to noise ratio which we can achieve by a filter which has a response like a match filter and match filter is in fact relates to the correlator. So this is in fact is the signal that uh, uh, at the receiver you have uh, uh, you have multiplied the received signal with the version of itself and then you use the uh, correlator for the by integrating it for the symbol duration uh, basically if you have uh, samples more than uh, you have more samples uh, for a symbol duration so you are integrating and uh, integrating it for the entire duration and you will get this to see it Otherwise, if you have a single sample, then you have to sample this and you will go to the decision stage. So uh, you can use a uh, MATLAB function int dump uh, to have this integration of the uh, multiple bits of the signal. So uh, the received signal in case of the match filter is in fact uh, is multiplied by the uh, flipped and delayed version of itself. So uh, what we will get here, we will sample it at t instance of time and we will make the decision. So when we are sampling at t instance of time, so you have seen earlier that the value of the sample, there is no difference. And there will be no decision, uh, there will be, uh, there will be no chance of decision uh, error if we are following uh, this. So what in fact uh, happens? 
at the receiver you learn that uh, we have the number of correlators equal to the number of basis function and if we have a signal which uh, is one dimensional so it has only one basis function and we need only one correlator to decide what we have uh, transmitted but in case of two dimensional uh, uh, signaling uh, we need two correlators to decide what we have actually transmitted so what i mean is uh, that the correlator uh, is in fact uh, is the uh, uh, easiest way to do this but in case of the match filter uh, in case of the match filter we have the uh, we have the number of match filter equal to the priori uh, symbols or set of priori symbols so we have we have the number of uh, match filters equal to the number of symbols available in the communication so if it is uh, if there are m symbols equal to the value of 64 or we have a more denser constellation so the problem is that we cannot uh, reduce the number of match filters but in case of correlator we can have an easiest solution to implement so in short what we are doing we are uh, we are convolving the signal with the version of itself so or we are designing a filter by which we convolve the symbol with its own version so that's why uh, i have told you Uh, we have uh, taken the length of the uh, input sequence of the equalizer uh, according to the depending on the length of the uh, symbol to be equalized so for example if we are taking uh, three samples here uh in this symbol and we are in uh, we are giving this to the equalizer so so it is in fact is uh it is this will be equalized by 3 plus 3 plus uh 1 uh sorry minus 1 so that's why we have taken the length of the sequence uh, to be equalized is equal to 5 so if you listen the previous lecture uh, or you have uh, uh, attend the online session uh, so you know what i want to point out here so length of the uh, input signal of the equalizer will not be changed even if we are sampling at t instants only because we will uh, we will equalizing the echoes for a duration of symbol which is uh, which is uh, of length uh, minus 3t to plus 3t or have length minus 2t to 2t so in case of sampled match filter uh in practical uh, in practice we are using sampled match filter so the we know the impulse response of the match filter so uh, this sampled match filter is in fact uh, uh, we have uh, the signal with noise addition 
and the bandwidth of the signal. So, what minimum bandwidth? What minimum bandwidth of the signal we are interested in? So, in pulse shaping case, we know this that is one by two t, uh, or t is the symbol time or symbol duration. So, the sampling we are sampling at a rate. Uh, fs is equal to 1 by t so uh, so the value of this uh, sampling rate is 1 by t so we have already learned this that if we are taking one sample per symbol so even then we have to maintain this minimum rate So this is in fact is uh, sample at t is equal to kts. So in fact, we are uh, taking sample for subsequent symbols or the upcoming symbols and we have its value, uh, we have its value uh, at t1 t2 and or uh, add value 2t 3t and so on for the all the uh, post cursor values so uh, this uh, so the coefficients of the match filters uh, the coefficients of the match filter would be in fact is n minus one. Uh, so represents the samples per symbol. So how many samples per symbol, uh, how many samples per symbol you are taking. So in fact, this is, uh, this is representing T. This represents T. So, how many samples we are taking uh, uh, for uh, the symbol values is uh, T. So, we want to truncate it. Uh, we want to truncate the symbol at this length. Uh, so this is in fact is the truncation where we want to truncate it. Uh, but we are sampling at a rate of one by T. So you have seen in my previous lecture that the symbol duration is T and we have the subsequent sync pulses. So in fact, what we are taking, we are taking the samples for the current uh, symbol and uh, the values of the other symbols at these instants are zero. So this is in fact is uh, the uh, T symbol and N is in fact is the timestamp. Timestamp uh, is the time is a function of time series. So, or this is the function of time series. So here we have an example. Uh, we are considering a case of discrete convolution that the output of the match filter will be discrete if we have uh, samples with multiplied with the coefficients of the uh, uh, with the coefficients of the uh, match filter and we have the convolution sum we have the convolution uh, sum 
so this convolution integral will be replaced by a convolution sum in discrete time. So the received signal uh, has uh, uh, two possibilities. Either it is one or it is two. So it has only two versions. So what we are we will do here is, in fact, we are uh, transmitting symbol and expect the match filter output according to this equation uh, because how many samples we want to have the convolution sum that represents the value of uh, 0 to n minus 1 and uh, that value will goes from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, so if we take the value of k is equal to n minus 1 uh, is equal to 3, so it means uh, the correlated output would be k is equal to 3 will be 3 minus n c1 of n uh, and we will, I will show you this example first and we will come back to this slide again. So look at this example. We have the received signal. So we have a filter whose bandwidth is 1 by 2 TS or uh, so what we will uh, do that we have first we take the first sample uh, S1 uh, of 0. For example, if we have the received signal is S1 of 0. So we have this as S1 of 0. So next time we have uh, uh, zero sample here and one sample here, and then we have zero sample here and one sample here and one sample here. Uh, wait for a while. So, so this is like a shift resistors. The received signal is shifted, uh, and finally we take the required samples to convolve with the uh, match filter response. So, what we will have, uh, we will have this value is uh, uh, zero sample here, one here, second here and third here. So finally we have the third symbol here. So you look at here, uh, you have S1 of 3, S1 of 2, S1 of 1 and S1 of 0 here. So this is just like the received sample and uh, so uh, first thing I want to use uh, uh, I want to say you here. So I want to say here that uh, uh, the pulse shaping filter or match filter uh, uh, is uh, is almost the same thing that if you are using the pulse shaping filter, uh, it's also the same having bandwidth uh, 1 by 2 TS. So uh, if we are using pulse shaping filter at the transmitter and receiver, uh, so should we need to use the match filter? So what I guess is no. So if we are using a match filter where it is just the same or we are using a pulse shaping filter pair at the transmitter and re receiver. 
so here is in fact is the again we have the received symbol is s1 and we have the shifted version for both the match filters uh, because we have here two match filters so we we are in fact uh, uh, we are uh, taking the same way we are shifting the signal here and we are shifting the signal here and we have the uh, correlation coefficients in fact is c1 of 0 c1 of minus 1 c1 of 2 c1 of uh, 3 so so c1 of uh, 0 is uh, in fact is here c1 of 0 and uh, c1 of 1 and this is c1 of uh, uh, c1 of uh, uh, c1 of uh, <coughs> uh, 2 and this is in fact c1 of 3 <coughs> we start from here 1 2 3 and here so same here we have this value uh, c1 of 0 here uh, here it's the value and here it is the value here and here it's the value here and here it's the value here now <clears throat> uh, so um, but in fact we are uh, what we are doing this is in fact uh, the received signal in the shift register is the flipped version that we have s1 of 0 here uh, convolving with c1 of 3 and we have s1 of 3 convolving uh, multiplying with c1 of 0 and then we have the sum so this is the convolution sum and that sum is equal to the response we take from the correlator. So we can say that the output is in fact is the correlation coefficient. So we have the correlation coefficient at the output of this match filter. In this case, that value is two. So, and that value is minus two. So it is very easy to recognize what is the transmitted symbol because of the higher value uh, will go for a positive decision. So if we have, uh, uh, if we have a decision, this is a hard decision, uh, hard decision type, when you have just, uh, you have value above this threshold, the correlation coefficient value, and you will choose the higher value for the uh, received signal. Uh, the correlation coefficient value is higher, or you can say that the output of the match full uh, with uh, three samples per symbol uh, is, uh, in fact, is two is higher than uh, we have its uh, match with the. Uh, opposite symbol which is which is in fact is not transmitted so there is uh, very little chances of error in this case so one thing i like i like to describe in the previous slide is in fact is the equation where we have uh, uh, taken these values there is a delay uh, in the computer, so wait for a while. Just wait.
Okay, we stop here and uh, I'll show you in the next presentation the equation for this.